So how about you start a little uh, word splash, if you will. Tell me what you already know about um, photosynthesis. Put it in the chat box. Sorry, I'm going through a lot of pages on accident. So in the chat box, tell me what you know about photosynthesis. Oh, granum, good job. Thylakoid, ATP, stroma. Oh, look at you guys, knowing parts of a chloroplast. Nice. Solar energy to glucose, which is in turn changed to chemical energy during cellular respiration. Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll pigments are going to come up today. The dark reactions, the light reactions. Plants use light, water, and CO2 to turn glucose into the things used for food or something like that. It's in the song. I don't remember. Calvin cycle, Melvin Calvin, the unfortunate soul whose mother named them with a rhyme. Melvin Calvin came up with, oh yes, redox. I was, did, I was looking for that PowerPoint today, actually, Sophia. That's what I wanted to start out with was the redox reactions. And um, I wasn't finding it, but maybe tomorrow, since tomorrow, or the, the next lecture we'll do Wednesday, um, the dark reactions get into redox. So maybe um, the reduction phase, maybe that's when it, we'll pull that up. Good job. So today we're going to kind of stick in the chloroplast and the chlorophyll and see what's going on. So we're going to break this apart. Um, today we're going to do light reactions. We'll get together Wednesday. We'll do the dark reactions, aka the light independent reactions. 26 folks are in with us. Okay. So um, I'll leave that chat box open if you guys have questions. i try to make my screen a little bigger. Ooh, that's really big. And then I got my friends off to the side here. I actually didn't want it that big. So, um, so a couple of things, I'm kind of breaking this apart. And normally I would give you, you know, this whole assignment and ask you to have it done by, um, by 3.30. And that's totally possible. Um, I did add a couple of videos. One video is like four minutes, one is seven minutes. So right there's 11. Um, so I actually stretched it out knowing that we don't have school tomorrow anyways. Well, I do, but you don't. Um, so I would like one piece for sure turned in today. And then the other piece um, you can have extra time on if you'd like. So um, you'll go to this Wiser Me, and it's an interactive worksheet. So um, like it'll have you label and click on things. Pay attention to, um, I think there's a word bank provided. So you need to spell things correctly and you need to use the same capitalization as they do in the word bank in order for the computer to recognize that the answer is correct. Um, so that's this one. This is the one I want turned in today. Okay. Um, and then we're working on this PowerPoint right here. We're gonna follow up with a, a Pogo, but I chopped it up. So I'm only giving you the first model. Normally you have like three models and some follow-ups. So you just have the first model, but I put some extra um, tasks. Like I put the videos in there and then asked you a couple of questions about the videos. And then I gave you a couple of practice questions from AP. So this item, um, if you, you know, if you want to take till tomorrow, that's fine. Um, Kelly notes, my favorite kind of like cliff notes, if you will. This covers all of photosynthesis. And this is a background video. Um, it's like what you should probably already know going into photosynthesis. So I'm gonna just jump right into um, the light reactions, but this is kind of like the background and the history. And you know, we didn't used to have oxygen in the atmosphere and then we did. It's that's what's covered in that video, so you might watch that sometime. No questions to answer about it. Maybe I should have put that as one of my tasks. Okay, so we'll get going. You guys remembered at least vocabulary, which is awesome. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of situate everybody. Am I recording? I don't see my little dot. Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter. the little dot in the, dot in the I, top left that says recording. Okay, I, um, I've already done a screencast on this one anyway, so I think it wouldn't matter. Okay, so um, we're taking photosynthesis, and you know um, 
that it's taking the light's energy and the air, and specifically it's taking um, the CO2 from the air. And um, from that, we're able to synthesize organic molecules. We mostly just talk about um, glucose back in biology, but now we're gonna learn that we can actually use um, photosynthesis to make our lipids, our proteins, our nucleic acids. So it's, it's better to say simply it's making organic molecules. Okay, um, and we should be able to recognize um, the interdependence between the light and dark reactions today and Wednesday. We should also be able to recognize the interdependence between photosynthesis and cellular respiration, which will be next week. So this week, chapter seven, next week, chapter eight. Oh, the cat's a little frisky this morning. Okay, so you guys um, remembered the chloroplast. I heard grana and thylakoids. So that was good vocabulary. Um, so there's different nomenclature. You might refer to the light reactions as light dependent reactions because they depend on the sun's light um, in order for it to work. Like if you didn't have sun's energy, you wouldn't have any photosynthesis. So basically you're converting energy, the sun's energy which comes in photons, that's what the unit of light energy is called, photons. So we're converting the photons to um, electrical energy in the form of electrons and then storing it in the form of ATP and NADPH. So we're converting solar's energy to chemical energy and the molecules that will store that energy are ATP and NADPH. The end goal of the light reactions is to make these two molecules, okay? These two molecules will then be used in the Calvin cycle. So the Calvin cycle does not need the sun's energy directly, right? It needs it indirectly because you had to make ATP and NADPH. So we refer to it as the light independent reactions now. We try not to call it dark reactions because that is kind of a makes you think that it only happens in the dark, but the dark reactions, AKA light independent reactions are actually happening all the time, okay? So to say dark reactions is kind of inaccurate. So we'll now refer to them either as the Calvin cycle or the light independent reactions. And this is where you're going to take that ATP and NADPH and you're going to reduce it into another form. And that form is G3P, which is a three carbon compound that most commonly is used to make sugars. So that's what we think of the sugar building reactions. Okay, I need to subscript my six and twelves and twos. So in the second phase of photosynthesis, which we're gonna talk about Wednesday, we're gonna take that ATP and NADPH and use it to reduce CO2 into glucose, C6H12O6, that should be a memorized thing. Um, if your Chromebook or laptop or anything isn't opening um, Wiser Me activities, I believe you have to like allow the add-ons or plugins or cookies, whatever it is. Um, so check, check with that part if you have trouble opening the worksheet um, and see if you can't adjust your settings to allow. And then um, I forget which one it is, if it's an add-on or a plug-in or a cookie. Um, but I can also get, bring up a different um, link and, and have you use that. My biology kids had success if I just gave them a separate link rather than um, the one that's in your classroom. The only thing is, is um, like then I have to go through and actually look for that score rather than it going directly into Google, but that's fine. So um, try, try your settings first and then, um, and then after the lecture, I can put up a different, a separate link if you're having trouble. Okay, so NADPH is like putting energy in the bank. Okay, so we maybe are gonna cover photosynthesis in a little more detail if you had one of the other two biology teachers. If you had me, um, we probably hit these details anyways, because I have a hard time explaining the process without explaining what's happening in the process, because I don't see how you could possibly understand it if you don't talk about what's happening. 
Um, so first of all, recognize this cluster of pigments right here. So this cluster of photosynthetic pigments is called a photosystem. Um, so if, so if the, you guys know that the pigment you're talking about is chlorophyll. You have chlorophyll A, you have chlorophyll B. Plants have lots of different pigments. The ones that we're gonna talk about in this reaction is chlorophyll A and B. Um, and you have a photosystem one and a photosystem two. And we talk about this linearly, like this process is happening here first in photosystem two. And that's awkward for you to remember. They were named according to when they were discovered. So it's not that this is the second step. It just was discovered after the first one was discovered, okay? So P680 is referring to what wavelength of light it's absorbing. And remember the wavelength of light is the energy. So the sun's energy coming down in the form of photons, white light, you know, has every um, wavelength, Roy G. Biv, um, and the wavelength that this particular pigment is picking up is 680, so nanometers, I believe. Um, so sun's energy is going to excite electrons, and when we say excite electrons, if you're in chemistry, you know, that means it's going to cause electrons to jump to outer energy levels, okay? So like you have your first ring with two and eight and eight, right? So when electrons get excited, they move away from the nucleus, which means they're held less tightly to the nucleus. So um, they go to an outer ring, in which case they can get so far from the nucleus that they are completely lost from the atom. So when we say that the electrons are excited, that's what we're referring to. They're boosted to higher energy levels until they leave the chlorophyll molecule, okay? So this pigment, remember, is a molecule. So it leaves the molecule. You see the electrons being excited up here, and they connect with a primary acceptor. So you are in the thylakoid membrane. So remember, you have the little disks, increasing surface area, little disks that make up the grana, kind of like quarters that make up a roll. So you're in the thylakoid membrane here and embedded in the membrane, remember, is lots of different proteins. We saw that in the last um, chapter. Oh boy, lots of things going on here. So um, that is happening and at the same time, because wave like sun is hitting the chlorophyll all at once, right? So also there's water molecules that are in that chloroplast in that thylakoid. The energy from the sun, remember, that creates like breaks in the hydrogen bonds, water molecules um, separate from each other and then the water molecules, the covalent bonds can separate as well. So that separates the water molecule into oxygen and hydrogen, okay? So all at the same time, sun's energy is exciting electrons and also splitting water molecules, okay? So we're gonna use the hydrogen, we're gonna release the oxygen it's a waste product of photosynthesis. The plant doesn't need it for this process. The plant will use it for cellular respiration. We'll also release it to the atmosphere for us to use for cellular respiration, okay? So let's look at the splitting of water. So that's what's happening to the oxygen. The electrons, because hydrogen and oxygen were held together by electrons, right? So the electrons that were once in that bond are going to replace the electrons that were lost from P680, from this photosystem. So these electrons disappeared, we gotta replace them, and they come from water. The hydrogen is going to go into the thylakoid membrane. So this is one of those thylakoids, okay? So you have these disks, and we need to keep this hydrogen ion concentration high. So we're gonna keep putting hydrogen into that space. So the hydrogen that splits can end up being pumped into the thylakoid membrane. So we release the oxygen, we use the electrons for the chlorophyll, and hydrogen goes into the thylakoid space. Now, we should be able to claim evidence reasoning, right? We should be able to um, explain what evidence supports this claim. So this right here is referring to um, historical studies related to oxygen. How do we know that the oxygen that we're breathing in is coming from water? Because I just said water split, hydrogen goes here, electrons go here, oxygen is released. 
how do we know that the oxygen that's being released is coming from the water and not coming from the CO2, okay? In the second step of photosynthesis, we'll talk about the CO2. So what we're going to do is we're going to use radioactive tracers. This is a common practice in several historical studies that have led us to know what we know about science, period, okay? So um, lots of AP questions refer to radioactive tracers, heavy forms of an element. So these are isotopes of oxygen. Um, so I believe oxygen is 16, its mass normally, and this is a heavier form and it's 18, which allows us to use it as a tag or a tracer. So um, wherever this oxygen 18 goes, you are able to follow it in a chemical reaction, okay? So if you incorporated the heavy oxygen into water, and we use the water in photosynthesis, we watered plants with this heavy water, and we're able to trace, does the oxygen go to the glucose that we're making or does it get released? And so they were able to see that it got released, which allows them to say that this oxygen had to have come from the water and not the CO2 because the heavy oxygen was incorporated in the water. Run some more experiments where they can incorporate it with CO2. They follow that. Indeed, the oxygen does not end up being released, but it ends up being incorporated into the glucose. So from these studies, we were able to determine where the elements are actually moving. The oxygen from water went into oxygen that we breathe out, or breathe in, sorry. Um, and then the oxygen from CO2 went into the glucose. This looks really complicated. Okay, so we've already covered this piece right here, photosystem two. We went and we put our electrons in the electron acceptor and now they're moving through the thylakoid membrane, which is, to me, it's like a hot potato, passing the electron from, if you've ever played hot potato, like you, you pass it to the next person, right? So you're passing the electron from one proton, or I'm sorry, one protein to another. And as it moves through here, it does lose a little bit of energy. Okay, so as it's moving through these um, proteins, these proteins are actually hydrogen ion pumps or proton pumps, because a hydrogen ion, all it has is a proton, doesn't have a neutron or an electron, so it's just considered a proton. So as the electrons move through this protein, they're activating a proton pump. The energy is being transferred. So this is allowing that um, pump to pump hydrogen into this thylakoid space because we want a high high we want a high concentration of hydrogen. It's moving through a very famous proton protein called a cytochrome um, complex. Cytochrome is present in the um, photosynthetic membrane and it's also present in the cellular respiration membrane and all organisms have a cytochrome complex all organisms which means that this protein is essential for life in order for all organisms to have it right okay so it's moving through and it's activating hydrogen ion pumps why do we need to move the hydrogen because we need to build up this high concentration so it can diffuse through this enzyme ATP synthase. So this is the chloroplast. These are individual um, thylakoids, making up a granum. So as you build up the concentration, we know that things diffuse from high to low, right? So it's gonna diffuse from the high hydrogen area to the low hydrogen area out here in the chloroplast space, which is called the stroma. So the energy from the electrons are transferred to the pump. The pump builds up the thylakoid concentration. Then they naturally diffuse from high to low through the ATP synthase. Down here is the image of ATP synthase. It kind of works like a turbine. So it takes ADP, adenosine diphosphate, an inorganic phosphate, P by itself. And as it rotates, so to speak, it connects those two and that's how we form ATP. So in this electron transport chain, we make ATP. The electrons end up over here in another photosystem, another cluster of photosynthetic pigments. This has a different pigment 
this has chlorophyll B. So chlorophyll A absorbs 680, chlorophyll B absorbs 700. So we're able to grab different wavelengths of light, which makes the process more efficient, okay? So these are actually happening at the same time, but we kind of talk about them linearly because of where the electrons are going, okay? So these electrons came from photosystem two originally. They're excited due to the sun's energy and they're going to go into a second electron transport chain. So here's the second electron transport chain. This one goes through some proteins that reduce NADP. So it's called NADP reductase. So to reduce, if you haven't been introduced to reduction oxidation yet, means that you're going to add electrons. You're reducing its charge, you can think of it that way. Leo the lion says, Gur, gain electrons redu reduced, okay? So we're reducing NADP, so we're adding an electron which allows it to bind hydrogen. So we're forming NADPH as an end product. This allows us to store electrons that we're gonna use in the Calvin cycle. ATP allows us to store energy that we will need for the electron, um, for the Calvin cycle as well. Okay, so two end products, NADPH and ATP. So these are called the electron transport chains. You have them present in the cellular respiration as well. So in mitochondria, in the membrane here, in chloroplast, in the membrane here. So basically it's just a bunch of proteins in the inner membrane of the organelle. They are electron acceptors or storing electrons in electron acceptors of NADPH. In order to do this, we need the hydrogen ion concentration gradient to form ATP. If you ran out of this gradient, ATP or hydrogen would no longer go through ATP synthase. You'd no longer be able to make hydrogen. I mean, sorry, too many words. You'd no longer be able to make ATP, okay? So NADPH storing electrons, ATP storing energy. And both of those are gonna be moved into the Calvin cycle. So this is an of overview of the whole process. Big picture, chloroplast. Chloroplast has within it the space, which is called the stroma. Individual thylakoids make up a collective granum. We're gonna blow up just one of those thylakoids. So you can see the thylakoid membrane looks just like the outer membrane of the cell, has phospholipid bilayer, embedded proteins. The inner space we just refer to as the thylakoid space. Photosystem two, photosystem one, P680, electrons are excited from the sun's energy and go into the electron transport chain. Meanwhile, water is split, oxygen is released, and electrons replace those that were lost. You should be able to discuss this process, okay? Try to explain it to somebody. You move through some um, different proteins that activate hydrogen ion pumps. You're going to pump hydrogen ions into the thylakoid space. This is the area of high concentration. It will diffuse out from high to low through ATP synthase, which binds phosphates with ADP to make ATP. Electrons continue moving through the electron transport chain where they replace electrons that were lost from photosystem one when sun was entered when the light energized them. These electrons move into a second proton, um, second protein chain, electron transport chain, and they go through an enzyme AD, NADP reductase, which combines NADP and electrons and hydrogen to form NADPH. These two things go into the Calvin cycle. And this is how the chloroplast is able to take the sun's energy and transfer it into a chemical energy of ATP and of the electron carrier of NADPH. Okay, so we've talked about the photosystems. I kind of already went into that, chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B. Um, we will do some pigment work where we look at how these chlorophylls are absorbing different wavelengths of light. I'm gonna save that for our next meeting. Um, harvesting energy, second step, taking the sun's energy,
putting it into ATP and NADPH. It's a bunch of repetition here. Okay, so this is just kind of a summary of how we get to ATP. You can go back and look at that one step at a time if you'd like. I've said it a few times. So ETC, referring to the electron transport chain, uses the sun's energy in the form of electrons to make ATP and NADPH. Photosystem two is going to form the ATP and photosystem one is going to form the NADPH, okay? Photosystem two is the one that's releasing oxygen into the air. Be able to talk about this process. Um, ATP likes to put questions in on the final test where they disrupt a system. So at any point, you could have a disruption. So let's say that there is a genetic mutation in the molecule that pumps hydrogen ions in the, in the cytochrome complex. So they would want you to be able to explain how that disruption would affect the overall system. Okay, they could also like remember making connections. These included enzymes all along the way through the membrane. What kind of things affect enzymes? sunlight or like temperature, um, pH, salinity. So they could disrupt your um, system by putting it at a different temperature or pH. You should be able to predict results. How is that going to affect the system? Okay, so they notoriously take something you know and then they change it and they ask you to come up with new knowledge. How would that change affect the system? Okay, so you need to be able to explain the process in the first place in order to be able to recognize cause and effect. Does that make sense? For when you're studying, you're trying to think of it that deeply, okay? So draw it out. Any process that we do, if you draw it out, it really helps your mind, um, helps your mind make sense of it. I'm gonna let you absorb that much today, okay? So I'm gonna go that far because all of the questions I ask you after this, they don't have to do with non-cyclic. So I'm gonna to wait to introduce that and I'm just gonna have you stick with the traditional, what we've already learned. So this is what you're familiar with from ninth grade, okay? Non-cyclic is gonna be the new piece. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna actually introduce that Wednesday instead of the dark reactions, okay? So that, and that's a shorter piece so that'll be good. Okay, so today um, the worksheet, Wiser Me, these are all gonna just let you practice with the material that I covered just now. So rather than staying on the line and saying, what is this and what is this, you guys can um, get out and do some individual practice. Connect with somebody and try to explain photosynthesis today. Get with your friends, form a little group, however you do that. Okay, this is gonna um, be a graphic for you and some questions, I think. So you're just going to kind of put all the correct words in here. There's a word bank up here. So pay attention to their um, spellings and capitalization. And then there's, um, this is a blow up of that electron transport chain that we just covered. So again, you should be able to label these. And um, I think there's a like show tag and it opens up these boxes. Okay, so if you click on the button, then it opens the box for you to, to answer. And then just a couple questions about that. Okay, so this is a good follow-up. This goes directly with what we just covered. So do this right away, um, and then you're set for the day. If you wanna keep going, you can do the rest of the pogle, which for a pogle, it is short compared to the ones we've done, okay? Because I did chop it up to just do this one piece of information. Okay, so then you'll open up that and You'll answer the set of questions and then you'll watch the video and then you'll answer some more questions and then you'll, that, that's it. Okay. So photosynthesis, light reactions, photosystem one and two, linear, not cyclic. What questions do you have?